So when a yogi uses uh, bhasma or vibhuti, vibhuti means, the word vibhuti means one who has attained a certain capability is a vibhuti. So ash is being referred to as that which has attained a certain capability. Ash is made in different ways. A yogi always uses ash from a cremation ground. So all the stories that you hear about how Adi Yogi always resided in the cremation ground is because… You're looking terrified, no? You? Not you? You okay? Cremation ground is okay. All of us will make you do the service someday, okay? <laughs> you may not go to a restaurant, you may not go to a disco, you may not go to your golf course, but we will all go make use of that one service, isn't it? Yes? Uh, <laughs> other things by choice. This we will make use, isn't it? So, uh, there's nothing to be terrified about. It's a place we have to go. You better go gracefully. <laughs> So always these stories about how he hung around cremation grounds, it's not that always he lived there, it is just after morning shower, they went to the cremation ground looking for the ashes for the day. For householders, people who are holding on to their houses. <laughs> for householders, we made other kind of ash. We made it from the next best thing that we did was cow dung. We burnt it and made ash. This is also good, it does certain things. It opens up your receptivity in a certain way. So we said don't apply it all over your body, just in certain points. If that is also difficult, then we did rice brown. Otherwise we did sesame seed ash. Like this we produce more and more benign things. But uh, when Adi Yogi used, he used cremation ground ashes, even today many yogis use only that. But you should not do that unless you properly initiated into the process and you know what to do with it. And if certain things happen, you know what to do with it. For you the simple ash, either made out of cow dung or rice brown, when you apply, if you go into your space, which is energetically charged in some way, if you apply it between your eyebrows, there is a spot. You must know this exact spot. There is a spot behind your ears. If you apply on those two sides and the pit of your throat and where the ribcage meets just beneath that, the idea is you want the higher aspects of who you are to become receptive. See right now, to put the example very basic, I want you to understand this, don't react to these things. Now, let us say you are a man. A woman came in front of you. It is not just the eyes, the whole body responds, okay? It depends who it is, what it is. Now, if you look at her in a certain way, you may think she's your mother. If you look at it in another way, you may be drawn to her sexually. If you look at it in another way, you may be repelled because it reminds you of something. Reminder need not be necessarily in the mind, it's all over the body. So now, you're walking on the street, you don't want to get entangled in all these things. If you see anything, you want to receive this in the highest possible way. So you apply vibhuti to make those spots more sensitive, so that your receptivity is in the higher dimension of life, not on the lower dimension of life. When I say lower, I am not talking in terms of hierarchy, high and low. I am talking geographically lower in your body, okay? It is not a question of morality, it is not a question of right and wrong, it is a question of entanglement. If you receive from higher dimensions within you, there is no entanglement. If you receive the same thing from lower dimensions, the same thing will become entangling in process. So, because you want to be 
in a place where you're moving towards your liberation, not towards your entanglement, you make the higher aspects of your body more receptive. Even all the women are, uh, you know, the Indian women are supposed to put a red spot to make them receptive here, not somewhere else. If some other part of the body receives, it responds in a different way. If it receives here, it responds in a different way. They must be using this red thing made out of turmeric. But now they are putting a plastic patch and making sure it is sealed. <laughs> really. <laughs> You're supposed to apply, kumkum is made out of turmeric, do you know this? But now they are applying either chemical powder or many of them are sealing it with a plastic patch. <laughs> it's a band-aid. Colored band-aid you can fix on your forehead. The idea is that receptivity happens in the highest center for you because how you receive something determines the nature of your life. What you receive is important too, but how you receive it is vital important. See, you could get poisoned with life in so many ways. You went somewhere, the way you responded to somebody or something could make or break your life, isn't it? Yes or no? Many times the way you respond to a certain human being or a certain situation could either make your life or break your life. Some people make it, some people break it, isn't it? So a little control over that just by making the higher aspects more receptive so that your… the lower aspects of your body are reactionary, they react. This is a response, it will give you a chance to respond to it sensibly rather than simply reacting. When you simply react, you get enslaved and entangled to many things. When you respond, you are living your life by choice.